One of the first things and how it relates in this respect to competence is that they have identified four core principles that all behavior analysts should strive to embody <laughs> um, that serve as the framework for the ethics standards, which I think is good if you've been with me and we've talked ethics before. We talk about how there's a lot of different um, frameworks that the old codes were built off of. So this is kind of, here's our framework. This is the framework we're working from. Um, so the first one, benefit others. Great. Um, behavior analysts work to maximize benefit and do no harm by, and there's a lot of different things that they're addressing here. Number two, treat others with compassion, dignity, and respect. Something that I think by listening to people in our profession and people that receive services, um, we haven't always done the best of saying that that's what we're doing and acting upon those. So really making this a core principle, treating others with compassion, dignity, and respect. Um, and it gives uh, examples on that. Number three, behaving with integrity. Behavior analysts fulfill responsibilities to their scientific and professional communities, to society in general, and to the communities they serve. And then there's a list. And the fourth one, which sort of was the impotence for this uh, uh, ethics talk this year. Number four, ensure their competence. This is a key foundational framework to the whole code is that behavior analysts are going to ensure their competence by, and I have this all written out on another slide here in a little bit, but by remaining within the profession scope of practice, so we're doing what we are licensed and approved to do, remaining current and increasing their knowledge of best practices and advances in ABA and participating in professional development activities. Hey, you're at a professional development activity. Good job. You're doing one of these things already. Um, so, okay, we can, we can show up for some professional development activities. Remaining knowledgeable and current about interventions, including pseudoscience, that may exist in their practice areas and that may pose a risk of harm to clients. So being aware of um, not only uh, the, the one right above this, the best practices and the advances, so keeping current in what is best practice, but also being aware of and the support behind other practices so that we can help our um the people that we serve to differentiate and we can make recommendations based upon knowledge and best practice we also are supposed to be aware of working within and continually evaluating the boundaries of our competence so okay we got to figure out what that's going to look like because we are responsible for doing that so this is where the self-assessment part comes in and working to continually, continually increase their knowledge and skills related to cultural responsiveness and service delivery to diverse groups. So we will touch upon um, some self-assessment in the arena of cultural responsiveness. But that in and of itself is also a whole area that if you have not received a lot of training and professional development you can you need to spend some time on and you can there's a lot of research there now um not just in the field of behavior analysis but also in the field of behavior analysis on this um so this is why it's important right we are framing this ethics code um, around four key principles, one of which is ensuring our competence. And one of the five things that they said is us continually evaluating the boundaries of our own competence. So that is why we are talking about it today. How do we um, self assess our competence? How do we evaluate these, um, these boundaries and our skill set so that we can then 
practice within our competence, ensure our competence, and continue to develop those areas where we are not yet competent.